Good morning, live viewers, or now viewers. We are live. Um, I wanted to, to do a couple things. One, say thank you all for your prayers. I praise God that I have a voice. Um, I want to make sure that I preview this now um, uh, new theme song, courtesy of Isaac Chubb. I thank you. Um, so I had one before, and remember I was telling you I was selfish, and I didn't want anybody else to be able to play it, right? And so this one, he's given me exclusive rights and all of that. The issue is um, it's not working with me trying to play it with my computer. Um, and so I'm going to play it via the cell phone, um, and I just need you all to um, be with me, uh, keep me in your prayers as I am trying to do this. Uh, before we get started, though, I want to say my MRI, they ended up moving it up to Wednesday. It came back clean. So thank you all for that. Um, my voice is back. Thank you all for that. Um, I am coughing up blood still, but but to God be the glory, um, I no longer have a fever. I had a fever of 100 plus a couple days. Um, and so today it was 97, so I thank you all for that. But I want to be able to play this song. I'm not going to uh, give you the words like I did last time because I think they are so clear. And so after that, I will plug back in my headphones because I know it's easier to hear me in my headphones, but it's not easier to hear the song. All right. So let's go ahead. Courtesy again of Isaac Chubb. Thank you. Here is the now or the new now theme song. <laughs> To start my day about 
about that. So now I just have to get me a regular microphone instead so that I can play that every morning before we get started. Again, thank you, Isaac Chubb. I didn't give him any instructions whatsoever. I just asked him if he would do it for me and give me exclusive rights so I would not hear it anywhere else. All right, let's go ahead and see whether or not this takes my um, my microphone right now. And so hopefully it has switched over to my microphone. Um, if not, then uh, please bear with me. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for who you are, Lord God. We love you, we honor you, we cherish you, Lord God. We worship you, we thank you, Lord God. You are such a miracle worker, Lord God. All the things that we don't even know that you're doing, that you're doing for us, Lord. We just thank you and praise you, Lord. We ask right now that you would be with us as we get ready to go through this study, Lord. Um, it's been a while, but ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that your Holy Spirit would lead me and guide me and sustain my voice, Lord God, with no coughing or anything else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So let's go ahead and we will get started with Genesis chapter 41 and we'll start with verse 46 we'll read 46 through 49 and then we will go from there all right so it reads as follows and if i'm screaming in your ear i apologize i just don't know if the microphone picked up all right so it says um in the king james version verse 46 and joseph was 30 years old when he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and joseph went out from the presence of pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities, and the food of the field, which was round about every city, laid he up in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea, very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. All right, what has happened? Back on Monday, we talked about how Joseph uh, was able to interpret through God Pharaoh's dream. And so Pharaoh was like, okay, we need somebody to be put in charge of all this. And Pharaoh looks at Joseph and says, hey, you're the man for it. You're the best person for it. So Joseph ends up getting like the ring and the robe and a gold chain and all of that from Pharaoh to signify that he is second in charge. He is the governor of the land. And he starts putting away food, right? Because the dreams that uh, Pharaoh had, they were one and the same. And it was basically God saying, look, you're going to have seven years of plenty. And then there's seven years coming after that of famine. You won't even be able to recognize the um, years that you had a plenty because the famine is going to be so bad, right? And so verse 46 says, and Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. All right. He was 17, remember, when he was sold into Egypt. All right. So 13 years have passed. And so, uh, and Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field, which was round about every city, laid he up in the same. And remember, he's laying up a fifth of this food. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea, very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. I am amazed at the fact that back in this day, they could put away food for, we'll say, eight years. All right, because seven years of plenty, they don't need it but that eighth year they will. So they can put away food for eight years without whatever preservatives we have today. And we can barely get our food to last for two without adding a whole lot of stuff to it, right? So that is amazing to me. The next thing is, it's amazing what people will say about what was and was not back in the time of Jesus' day. You hear people talk about it wouldn't even know corn back then. Corn wasn't invented until da 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 or didn't come on the scene until da 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 How do we know? Okay, how do we know? This word corn is pronounced in the Hebrew, bower, bower, and it means corn 
or grain. And if we go over to Luke chapter 6, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass on the second Sabbath after the first, that he went through the cornfields, and his disciples plucked the ears of corn and did eat, rubbing them in their hands. All right? And this is Jesus with his disciples. So they're going through the cornfields and rubbing um, the corn in their hands. So it can mean grain as well, corn or grain. And so, yes, it could have been that that's what they had, but we don't know whether or not it was corn, okay? One thing to remember also, just like with Greek, uh, the Greek words where you hear the word love, is translated in English as love, but what love is it? There are, I think, five different loves. One is brotherly love, like, hey man, yo, we cool, right? And that's a different type of love than eros, the erotic love, all right? And that's a totally different type of love than agape, all right? And so um, you have to understand that the English language is limited as far as some words go all right so nevertheless verse 49 and joseph gathered corn as the sand of sea very much until he left numbering for it was without number verse 50 and unto joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came which asnath the daughter of potiphar priest of on bear unto him remember this is the wife that pharaoh has given unto joseph and Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God, said he, hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And Manasseh in the Hebrew is pronounced Meneseh, 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 and it means causing to forget. Remember, we can find out a lot of times what it means by looking around the word. Um, verse 52, and the name of the second called he Ephraim. For God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And Ephraim is pronounced in the Hebrew Ephraim, Ephraim, and it means double ash heap or I shall be doubly fruitful. Okay. And so uh, he was blessed a second time with a child. So he, ba he basically said that you're going to remind me that I've been doubly blessed. All right. Verse 53. And the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of Egypt were ended. All right. So Joseph is 37 right now. And the seven years of dearth began to come according as Joseph had said. And the dearth was in all lands. But in all the land of Egypt, there was bread. And so everywhere around Egypt is um, basically I won't say barren, but the, the famine has hit, is hit in Egypt as well. But Egypt has bread and the rest of the lands don't. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, go unto Joseph, what he saith to you, do. This reminds me of when the wine ran out at the wedding that Jesus and his mom was at. Uh, she looks at the servants and she was like, you see that guy over there? Whatever he says, do it, all right? So Pharaoh is like, you see that guy over there? Whatever he says, do it. So another type and shadow. And the famine was all over the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. All right, so he's not just giving them the food, all right? He is selling it to them. So this is where the government begins to make some money off the people. Um, yeah, off the people, all right? And so... Uh, verse 57, and all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn because that he, hmm, let's try that again. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn because that the famine was sore in all the lands. All right. So this is a worldwide famine and he is having, uh, he's having all of the other countries are hearing about the fact that there is uh, corn in Egypt, and so they are coming to him. Chapter 42. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do you look why do ye look one upon another? Alright, so they're calling his name Jacob again. Again, I don't know why they go back and forth with this. 
verse two. And he said, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy us and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. And Joseph's 10 brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. All right, well, let's keep going. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent not with his brethren, for he said, lest peradventure mischief befall him. All right, so what is happening is Israel, Jacob, whichever one you want to call him, he has learned that there is corn in Egypt. And so he is sending his brothers so that they don't perish. And it says his 10 brothers went, but Benjamin didn't go. So this means Judah is obviously back around the um, land of Canaan. Okay. So all 10 brothers go from there. Israel keeps back Benjamin because he doesn't want something to happen to Benjamin like happened to Joseph. Because remember, Rachel was his favorite wife and those were the two kids by him. All right. By her. Verse five. And the sons of Israel, see, they call him Israel. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came for the famine was in the land of Canaan. And Joseph was the governor over the land. And he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And I think I have governor, maybe not. Yes. Okay. And governor in the Hebrew is called Shalit. Shalit. And it means master, potent, um, that hath power or ruler. All right. And so that's what that means. And this is now that first dream that Joseph had where his brothers bowed down to him because verse six says again, and Joseph was the governor over all the land and he it was that sold to all the people of the land and Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren and he knew them but made himself strange unto them and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, whence come ye? And they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew him not. All right, so how is this? You have to remember, it's been 13 years. Uh, well, actually it's been more than that. It's been 20 years because the famine or the years of plenteous have gone. So it's been 20 years and they would not expect Joseph to be governor of Egypt, okay? And then now he is dressing like an Egyptian, walking like an Egyptian, and he is speaking in the Egyptian language, all right? Because we'll see later where it specifically says that he uses an interpreter, all right? So he looks like an Egyptian, he talks like an Egyptian, and they expect his brother to be dead many years ago, or their brother to be dead many years ago. Um, verse nine, and Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them, and said unto them, ye are spies, to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. All right, so he looks at them, he knows who they are, and he's like, you know what? You're spies, flat out, you're spies. We will go ahead and pick up with this on tomorrow. Y'all, I am just so happy that I have a voice again. Um, they are putting me on some new pills again later, but I just thank and praise God that he is a keeper. All right, he is a keeper. Let's go ahead and end here. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for who you are, Lord. Father, the way that you appear in my life, would you please appear to those that doubt who you are, Lord God, who you, your son, Jesus, and your Holy Spirit, anybody who doubts who you are, Father, would you please, Lord God, appear to them, Father, that they may have a personal encounter with you, Lord God, so that they may know that they know that they know that they know that you are the God, the, the, the uh, true and living God, um, that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, 100% God, 100% man, and that your Holy Spirit is God as well. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. We ask this blessing and we thank you in advance. Amen. If by chance um, the volume didn't come through for whatever, we will redo this study on Monday. Y'all have an amazing weekend.